Welcome to the presentation of the Clenmore 2 Chronicles. Today we open Chronicle number 3. It's called Old Jamie Single Cask Reserve. Now we're talking about a chronicle that adds quite a lot of complexity and is not suitable for first-time players of Glenmore 2 Chronicles. Obviously, Scottish single malt is one of the well-known exports from Scotland, besides the haggis, but that's a story for another chronicle. The players now not only produce single malt, they can even let their single malt casks age in one of their single cask cellars. This increases the quality and the value of the whiskey. We dedicate this chronicle to Jamie Stegmeier, whom you know as a designer, for example, of scythe or viticulture. And for us, he was very helpful because he has this excellent blog with a lot of tips and hints for Kickstarter creators. So we contacted Jamie and asked him if he could use one of his mechanisms from his game in Glenmore 2 Chronicles to say thank you. So that's why you have the aging aspect of viticulture right now here in Claymore 2 Chronicles and you can let your whiskey age. But there's a twist to it. If you don't know the base game of Claymore 2 Chronicles, here are the rules in under 60 seconds. It's always the turn of the last player on the rondel to take a tile. The further the player moves, the longer he might have to wait until his turn is up again. The player places the tile he has taken on his territory and activates the new tile and all adjacent tiles. You use this to produce whiskey and resources, to take possession of landmarks and to move your scots, besides which you are only allowed to place new tiles. Many tiles produce victory points by trading resources. If you are in short supply or have plenty of resources, you can use the market. If a player takes a person tile, he can trigger a one-time or permanent effect on the clan board. After each of four rounds, there's a rating, where each player measures his difference to the last player in four categories. Number of persons, whiskey barrels, landmarks and scots in the home castle. A difference of one will earn you one point. A difference of five will earn you eight points. At the end of the game, the territory size of each player's territory is compared to the smallest territory. And you lose three victory points for each tile that your territory is bigger. For the full explanation, watch our video here on the channel. Old Jamie's single cask reserve comes with some additional material. Five replacement tiles for the base game distilleries, Paltony, Glenmore, Glenlochy, Etradour and Milburn. There are two new distilleries, Ben Wyvis and Glen Elvin for the B and C stacks. You can recognize the new tiles by the printed chronicle symbol, so that you can easily sort them out after the game. There are also 12 whiskey seller cards, with a first, second and third seller for each player. If whiskey is produced now, it is stored in the first seller. By activating the new distilleries, whiskey can now be matured, by pushing it forward on the seller bars. The victory points under the bar indicate how much the whiskey is worth when you sell it. But selling whiskey is tricky because the sales places are limited and are available on tiles on the rondelle. In each of the stacks B, C and D there's only one selling tile and only the player moving over it may sell a whiskey barrel by selling it to a square in the lower right corner and collecting the victory points. There's always one place less than players playing. If a player moves exactly on the selling tile, he may also use the bonus place in the top left corner and sell up to two barrels. If you can't sell your whiskey, annoying, but it still scores in the normal scoring of the game. Old Jamie's single cask reserve works with any number of players and adds 10 minutes to the game. Thank you very much again to Jamie Stegmeier. <laughs>